Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another Brad Tragic video. And today we're going to be talking about another album review. I know, it isn't surprising. It's very surprising that I'm doing another album review. I got my research notes for you right here. I'm going to talk about it. But today we're going to be talking about Slaves on Dope. Yes, I know. What, what are you talking about? It's a band. And uh, they actually had a CD come out a couple years ago, surprisingly. And... <laughs> I gotta stop doing this though because I'm I'm reviewing bands that came out around the time when, you know, I'd first got on to high school, you know, 2000, and you know these bands were hot off the presses. I mean, this band I it, it started uh I wrote some stuff down on it, didn't I? I think they came out in 2002. I, I think I remember doing research. Um, don't quote me on that though, but they came out around that time, and they went through all the struggles and everything like that, but. When you go to listen to like the, one of their most current albums, of course it's not going to be like super popular or whatever because they were over back then. They were kind of popular back then. Right now, they're probably not doing anything. They're probably just randomly putting the albums and not really getting much exposure. So, of course, they might not be that great. So, hopefully that leads that lets you want to continue to watch the video. Anyways, today we're going to be reviewing Slaves on Dope. That's the name of the band. And their album called Horse. Uh, it came out in 2016, 10 songs, 39 minutes only. But, I mean, there's a pretty decent amount of songs on here. There's um, 10 songs on here, so that's not too bad. Uh, so, it started off with a, a song called Electric Kool-Aid. Um, and and I, I, I'll redo this every single album review just to kind of let you guys know what my kind of point of view is on music. When I do these music reviews, it's basically that if I say a song is, you know, a, a great song... It's something that you're going to want to go to. Like when you get a new CD and you pop it in the CD player or when you get an MP3 when you're looking for the songs to put on your, you know, uh, iPod or your phone or your, you know, your, your dash or however you're doing if you're downloading them somehow. Um, you're going to have a few songs off a certain album that you're going to be like, no, I don't want to listen to that. I'm going to go to the next track. And that's what I kind of go by. Songs that are really listenable. So if you hear me say it's a good song, that's what I mean. And, you know, it, other songs could be okay, and you're like, eh, that's a good song, but I don't want to listen to it right now. And that kind of gives it to the point that those songs are kind of like average songs. They're nothing special. You like them. You think the the person did a great job at that song, but you're just not, you just don't want to listen to that song uh, all the time. So I'm not saying the, the songs are trash. That's not what I'm saying. So let's go into our Electric Kool-Aid. Uh, it was a cool start to the al album. It was a good tune, but, I mean, it was totally forgettable. Um, I, I got to hear what they sound like, and I do remember them. They're, they're really good. I, I want to review the uh, their original CD because I think it'll be really, really good. I remember listening to that and being somewhat into it. Uh, and I remember listening to it for a good time before whatever the next one came out. And then I don't think I picked up the CD for a while and probably ended up pulling it off or something. Uh, but number two, track number two was, uh, yawn, uh oh, uh, track number two was Health Food and Heroin, what a name of a song, and the weird thing about it is I picked this up, and on the back here, I have stuff from school, I saved this paper, because I'm, I'm weird like that, anyways, but I'm looking at this, and I see something about health food, I see free, all I see was free, and I see electric, and I'm like, what is, is this, oh, I'm going to just have to turn it over, no, this was the right, <laughs> just today with the songs were weird, uh, anyway, so, health, food, and heroin, uh, this is just an average song, you know, it was, it was a really good, you know, and, and they're basically hard rock, so, if you heard a hard rock band, you heard them all, they're basically about the same, this guy's got kind of a different kind of voice, though, his voice, I think, is kind of like, I want to say, like, Seether? But no, I don't... Like, if Seether was metal, I don't know. Like, that's kind of what I, I kind of think. That's my opinion. So you guys may think differently if you've heard this band. Um, but this, Health Food and Heroin, just kind of average song. It, it seemed like it was... This seemed like a filler song. It did not seem like a song that they really intensely cared about. Now, Electric Kool-Aid, they do seem like... They did seem like they cared about that song. It did sound really cool. But the second track seemed like it was kind of a filler song. Um, and which, you know, like I said, I don't really know how they record albums. I don't know how they do. I mean, I know they record albums, but you know how the record label is, you know, if they're in charge of the order of the track list, 
they could mix them all up and put them however they want. Um, uh, track number three was called Free Basing. Yeah. Anyways, uh, it was a, the first good song on the CD that I really, really enjoyed. Uh, very slow. It, it, it was kind of slow, but it meshed well. Uh, you know, there's harmony and then there's hard, uh, you know, hard, there's hard music and mellow music kind of working together. Kind of, it is a good song put together, basically. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, that was a really, it was a good song. It was one I recommend checking out. Free Basing by Slaves on Dope. Uh, then track number four was called K-Hole. And it's a weird name for them songs. That, that, I, will, I will give them that. And I do remember there being some weird songs on their original CD too. Now, now I'm going to go back and it's going to be like totally off. Uh, but yeah, great song. It was a, it was a fast moving song. Uh, you know, and this is, I think, the kind of band I remember them being. You know, they're they're great at, at, at this. Doing, like, fast talking stuff. And that's kind of what the thing was back then. New Metal was a thing. And I think they were kind of lumped in with New Metal a little bit. But I can tell they've kind of moved away from that. But, you know, this CD's kind of not, you know, a, a, that good of a taste in my mouth, really. To want to listen to more of them. But I kind of want to explore what their first CD sounded like. Uh, so I probably will explore that. Uh, but K-Hole was a good song. I recommend you checking out. Uh, number five, Script Writer. This one had me perplexed. It, it wasn't an average. It was better than an average, but it was uh, not a song I would recommend. So it's kind of like right there. I would probably recommend that it's actually a song you probably would listen to again. You know, if you're passing through, you know, listen to it uh, on your, your CD or your, you know, MP3 player. And, uh, you know, great song mixed with kind of rap with barely, barely rap. You know, uh, just enough though to make it really to make it decent. Um, Daryl DMC McDaniel's appears. He's like, I guess, the guy that doing the chorus. I think he does the chorus. Is it the chorus or the verse? One of the two. I can't remember what he did. And I don't know who he is. I, I clicked on his name on Spotify. And nothing came up for him. So he may have just been. I know sometimes some people have like guests on our Vanilla Ice had a bunch of people like that. Like, you, you click on their stuff, and it's like, oh, they did nothing except for mixtapes, and they're, they're not popular. Um, they never made it big. Uh, so, yeah, good song. I, I recommend it. Scriptwriter, you should check it out. Um, but like I said, it, was, it wasn't, like, the best song ever, but I think it was pretty, I it was pretty decent. Uh, number six was Inter, Interplanetary Mission, Mission. This was weird. I didn't really like it. I think they even said interplanetary mission, like somewhere in the song, and I'm like, kind of weird. Didn't it didn't mesh well? It didn't. It, it was just average. It was okay. It was okay, but nothing special. Number seven, Liquid Sunshine. Now, name of the song. I'm like, oh, this has got to be a filler song. I, I really did thought it was gonna be a filler song, but this is a really good song. Grooving. It was grooving. It was catchy. It was you know hard rock. Some of the if you think of hard rock, this fits right there. And this sounds like some, sounds like something I heard, like on a TV show or something. So I wonder if I haven't heard it on a TV show. Because one of the lines in there was, Another Sucker for the Romance. And it sounds like something I've heard, like on a TV show or something. Like in 2016, probably when this album came out. Uh, but yeah, great song. I, I love that hook, though. Another Sucker for the Romance. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, good song, Liquid Sunshine. Uh, number eight. That's very good. I try to take a drink. Drinking my Coke. Number eight, codependency. You can tell what they want to talk about. I wonder if they're on drugs or if they've gotten off drugs. Whatever. And this was featuring somebody. Uh, I think it was a girl. Leela Baum. B A U M L E E L A B A U M Leela Baum. I guess that's how you say it. Say it. I don't know. Baum. Bam. Boom. No. Pretty good song though. Uh, there was a quote in here. It made me. Yeah, I like it. It, was good. it said, "You shoot your mouth off. You shoot your mouth off like a hand grenade." I like that. I wrote that down. I, I, I'm trying to do that every once in a while. If I catch a lyric that's really cool. I'll write it down. Like, there were so many during the ICP review, though. If you didn't check out my ICP review of the album I did of theirs, uh, one of their more recent, I think it was 2015 album that they did, uh, go check it out. 
because there was a lot of great quote, quotes I wish I would have wrote down, but I didn't write down. Uh, but it, it was actually a pretty good review, I think. Uh, number nine. Uh, P and P. Don't ask. I have no idea what it stands for. Uh, average, but you know, good song. Just a basic song. Nothing special. Once again, seems like kind of a filler song. Uh, but it, it was okay. Uh, number ten, <laughs> the greatest, one of the greatest names for a song, uh, Disco Biscuit. Uh, <laughs> this is actually not too bad of a song, but you know, to me, I. I Listening to it, I thought it could have been a little better. So, and that when when I say that, I'm thinking it could be for, forgettable um, because just something was not like there. And you know, I would sit here and I would explain the songs, but kind of you know, like if I say it's hard rock, you kind of can envision kind of some new metal hard rock with a guy kind of not really screaming, but kind of taking a striking tone with his voice and kind of having that gritty voice, uh, but. I don't know if they were really the voice is really gritty. I don't think his voice is gritty. It was kind of clear, but the words just like rolling off his tongue. I can just you know picture him singing and you know being on stage and everything. Uh, and I did see him live at Ozfest one of the years, like whatever the year they were, well, probably two thousand two, I'm assuming, or two thousand one. Um, yeah, probably two thousand one. Um, but yeah, Disco Biscuit, you know, it, it was a good song. It was really good, but something in the song just made me thought, like, it'd be forgettable, and you probably wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't listen to it all the time. So, but with that being said, one, two, three, four, five, six. So about six songs are pretty good out of ten, so that's actually pretty good. That's more than 50%, so that's good. You know, that's, yeah, that, that's a lot. Probably like 60, 65%, I don't know. Uh, pretty good album, though. I, I think it's pretty good. Like I said, I'm going to have to go back and check out some more Slaves on Dope. Uh, so don't be surprised. You'll see another CD pop up here. Album review show up uh, soon. And hope you guys enjoy the album review. Uh, more to come. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you like these album reviews and want to hear more from me about different bands. Uh, I don't I don't usually go on. I don't go by the trends. I don't go by... Uh, new albums dropping for the most part, but I'm not going to review the band usually just because their CD got released. It has to catch my eye. It has to get my attention. Um, you know, it, it, it's I'm not going to follow. Like, if, if someone asked me to review a certain CD, it would just come out. I'll do it. But I'm not going to, like, follow the trends and review an album just to review it just because it came out. Um I would do that maybe possibly with like metal CDs and rock CDs maybe, um, but other CDs I may not be as far to jump and review it quickly, uh, unless I'm a huge fan. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good jazz. Catch you guys later. Keep rocking and keep on listening to Slaves on Dope later.